Dennis Gates gets Missouri's first NCAA victory since Mike Anderson all the way back in 2010. And you know what? I think this offensive team did it with defense this time around. So let's talk about a thrilling and satisfying Missouri victory coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. Thanks for making this show your first listen every day. Check us out, of course, on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, no Missouri fan can be shocked that Missouri beat Utah State after the last week or so. But if you'd have told me all the way back in November or all the way back in April or March when Missouri hired Dennis Gates that, oh yeah, this team is going to make the round of 32, no problem. I'd be going, wow, that is quite the prediction. So, I mean, you want to talk about busting through the glass ceiling of Missouri basketball, a program that hasn't won an NCAA tournament game in 13 years. They do it with nine new players on the roster. Dennis Gates basically remakes the entire roster and takes them not only to the tournament without even being on the bubble, but wins a game and and relatively comfortably as well. Can you believe this? I mean, really, just go back to October, November, all the way back to April once again. Can you truly believe this? Well, you know what? As I said in my Locked On Now video, Everywhere on social media at Locked On Mizzou, including TikTok now, by the way. Desiree Reed Francois' brother, Roman Reed, said he came all the way to Sacramento by car because he said his sister is his hero. Well, guess what? DRF, you might be my hero for hiring Dennis Gates. Seriously, what an unbelievable move. Good for you. We saw DRF there in the crowd, cheering her butt off. Let me tell you, she's as happy as anybody. Good for her for making an incredible decision that has paid even bigger dividends than I think she could have possibly imagined at this point in the process. And obviously good for Kobe Brown as well. A guy who, after Conzo Martin was fired, it would have been really easy for him to move on and transfer, maybe go to the pros, something like that, move on from the only coach He's ever known in college basketball. And yet, he bought into the Dennis Gates system. He put faith in Coach Gates and all these guys, all this team. And that's one of the coolest things about this squad because even though there are so many new players, you can just tell that these guys really are a special group. They really enjoy each other's company and all that good stuff. And even better than that, if you're a basketball fan, well, they have an incredible chemistry on the basketball court. But you know what? Let's break down this game a little bit. I thought really for an offensive team that Missouri clearly is, I thought defensively that's actually what won Missouri this basketball game. Ashworth, the kid for the kid for Utah State, I'm telling you, he's as good a shooter as there is in the country, but Missouri didn't make him look like it today. They defended him very well and other than that steal There early in the second half that led to a wide open three. I didn't think he got very many good looks from the outside. In fact, he was kind of forced to shoot it from five or six feet beyond the line a few times just to get an open shot and try to get himself going. But overall, you know, when we started the game, I I, here's something I mentioned in my preview of the game against the Aggie against the Aggies. Trevin Dorius, the seven foot one center for Utah State. You know what? I thought a brilliant adjustment by Dennis Gates to start the game with Noah Carter on the floor instead of Mohamed Diara because that immediately meant that no Mohamed, excuse me, that immediately went that Noah Carter was going to be wide open on those pick and rolls, those pick and pops at the top of the key the entire game. 
if Kobe and Carter were going to play at the same time. Now, you saw later on, Aiden Shaw actually ended up playing more minutes than DR in the game. When Shaw was in there with Carter or with Brown, well, they were actually able to play the seven-footer Dorius at times on Noah, or excuse me, on Aiden Shaw, but when Carter and Brown were in there, they just exploited him, and ultimately that's why he was only able to play 12 minutes in the ball game. He was pretty effective in his 12 minutes, but 12 minutes is just 12 of the 40, so I thought Dennis Gates made a great decision to put the onus on Utah State very early to decide, hey, are we going to live with this big guy out here, or are we going to go small, and ultimately we made Utah State go small and made a team that doesn't have tremendous depth take one important guy out of their lineup immediately. And credit to Dennis Gates and the staff for that. Now, while I play, praise the Missouri defense, I will say that offensively, I thought that in the half court, Missouri played a little bit too slow at times, although that strategy has worked down the stretch in crunch time the last few weeks, you know, and it worked today as well. Let's just slow it down, find a matchup we like, and go for it. But I just felt like at times we got a little bogged down and trying to throw it into the post and do sort of the back down, you know, put your butt into a guy offense with either Kobe or Noah and occasionally DeAndre Golston as well. And I felt that occasionally at times throughout the season. So, you know what, end of the day, Missouri obviously played a pretty darn good game offensively, but I just felt like at times we got a little bit more bogged down in the half court. But having said that, Dennis Gates, out of every single timeout, out of every single stoppage seemingly, had the perfect answer. It really was wild to watch. I mean, this guy for the fourth year he's had, his first year in a high major conference, it's unbelievable the answers he has. He gives his players a lot of freedom, but when he feels like, hey, I need to take a timeout here, we need a really important possession, or we're coming out of a stoppage for whatever reason, it's just amazing to me, especially down the stretch here, how Gates seems to have the answer each and every time. And you know what? Brendan Haywood certainly noticed it as well. I complain about the announcers, by the way, quite a bit. I really like Brendan Haywood, the big man from North Carolina back in the day. I'm actually a fan of him quite a bit. And maybe the best play of the entire game that Dennis Gates drew up, there was two seconds on the shot clock, 68-61, Missouri leading. You know what? If you don't make this shot, Utah State comes down, cuts it to maybe five or four, something like that. Just an incredible play drawn out. Gets Nick Honor a shot, hits his only shot of the game, makes it 72 to 61. And for all intents and purposes, that was the game. So Dennis Gates, my goodness, the guy definitely gets, I think, the bigger picture in terms of the human element of basketball, trying to figure out how to get a bunch of guys to work together, a bunch of guys with confidence and big egos and, and needs and wants and to maybe put that all aside for the team. But not only that, he gets the X's and O's part of it too, or at the very least his staff does. So big credit out to him and his whole staff because I thought they were tremendous today. As good as they've coached all year. And you know what? If you're going to pick an MVP from the Utah State first round victory today, I think you're going to be hard pressed to pick between Des Moines Hodge and, and Kobe Brown. And that's probably the case for the whole season, right? So let's talk about how tremendously both of those guys played. But first, the midway point of the NBA season has now long passed us at this point. So it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets, if your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. 
And you know what? Hopefully we can parlay some stuff with Missouri playing against Arizona or maybe even Princeton as I speak now. Zona just with a one-point lead over the Princeton Tigers. So don't miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen today. For your second listen, definitely check out Locked On College Basketball. Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you a breakdown of everything you need to know about March Madness. Plus, hear from experts, coaches, players, the whole deal. It's Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get a finer a podcast. You know what? Speaking of finer things... I'd say Kobe Brown and Des Moines Hodge were among the finest players in the tournament today. Honestly, they were both just about perfect. And if you don't have the length or explosion to bother Kobe Brown's shot near the basket, you're in deep, deep trouble as we saw today. Because again, he was just about perfect going four of four from two point range, three of four from downtown. Somehow missed two free throws. My God, what is wrong with you, Kobe? You missed two free throws? What are we doing here? But in all seriousness, the guy was incredible. That step back three was just, oh, mwah, chef's kiss. Just incredible stuff by Kobe, Bron- by Kobe Brown, who has been, yeah, named after Kobe Bryant, obviously. Excuse my confusion there for just a moment. But the thing about Kobe is... He's just so versatile. If you can't, if you're not big and athletic enough to bother him inside and you're not quick enough to stop him off the dribble or match him outside, he's just going to eat you alive. And as I explained maybe an episode or two ago in the pros, I think when Kobe is not the main focus of an offense, well, he's going to be that much more dangerous. I think he's got much more of a chance in an NBA career maybe than people expect. And if anything goes against him, listen, I compared him to Damari Carroll, a guy who was in the 9 draft, of course, at the back end of the first round. If anything hurts Kobe, it's that, well, 14 years later, so many more international players, just the popularity of basketball worldwide and in America, too, has continued to rise. So just the competition is really, really stiff right now. But Kobe... Man, I just love watching him play basketball, and unless you have, I don't know, a top two or three pick in the draft and a bunch of other super lengthy guys to sort of concentrate on him completely, he's going to get his for sure. And speaking of a guy who got his, I thought Des Moines Hodge, of course, was excellent tonight. Hits five of ten from downtown, three of four from two. Again, he was practically perfect offensively. But defensively, I thought immediately Des Moines Hodge really set the tone for Missouri by getting his hands on balls, just causing havoc and making those Utah State ball handlers and that offense in general just a little bit uncomfortable. I thought that made all the difference in the world. Listen, we can say as Missouri fans, certainly that we were fortunate that there were some open Utah State three-pointers that didn't go in in particular in the first half. But I just thought for the most part, Missouri was hassling those guys, getting them out of their comfort zone, in particular Stephen Ashworth, who I believe is absolutely a really, really fine college basketball player, but tonight wasn't his night, and I think you got to give Missouri all the credit in the world for switching on to him, and guys like Aiden Shaw and Kobe Brown, I thought Aiden did a really good job in particular on a couple different possessions when he switched out up top. Onto, onto Ashworth, and he just looked a little hesitant to pull the trigger against a guy with that kind of length and athleticism. So all the credit in the world to the Missouri forwards, too, who had to switch out on Ashworth and do a lot of perimeter defending as well. By the way, speaking of Hodge, Des Moines with about four minutes left, Missouri was up eight, and I've at times – you know, push back a little bit against the Clarence Gilbert comparisons just because, I don't know, for whatever reason in my mind, I don't see them as exactly the same players. But don't get me wrong, I, I get 
I get the comparison, especially again with Missouri up eight Hodge, a fast break three pointer. I was going, uh, no, 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 but yes, the ultimate no, no, no. Yes. Guy is Clarence Gilbert. I think Des Moines Hodge is pretty darn close. Of course that put Missouri up 67 to 56. And for all intents and purposes, that was the ball game. And you know what? For as good as Missouri was in this game, I will give some slight criticisms. So let's talk about that and why Missouri's rotation has gotten a little bit narrow recently after these quick words. So at this point, I got to be completely honest. I feel like a, a complete horse's patoot, even, even throwing any slight criticisms toward Dennis Gates. But you know what? That's the job. So here it comes. And if you listen to this show, especially after the Ole Miss game at the end of the regular season, senior day, I thought with about 45, 50 seconds to go, one of my big, you know, nitpicks of what Dennis Gates did and his staff strategically at the end of that game, I did love when Missouri was two possessions ahead that they trapped in the middle of the court. They trapped the point guard for Ole Miss, essentially their lead ball handler in the middle of the court, which is important, by the way, not the sidelines, the middle of the court, 35 feet away from the basket or so, and Ole Miss immediately passes out of it, gets a layup in about three, four seconds. And fortunately, Missouri won that game, executed, out-executed Ole Miss down the stretch, but to me, defensively there, that was a mistake, and I think we saw a similar situation at the end of this ball game. And by the way, Brendan Haywood, who I praised earlier, well, he pointed it out. He actually agreed with me. There was a situation late in the ball game when Missouri trapped Ashworth in the corner. Again, the excellent offensive and especially shooter for Utah State trapped him in the corner. Missouri did a good job out on him the entire game. But in this particular situation, the initial trap worked, but then when Ashworth threw it to the right wing, or excuse me, the left wing from the left corner, well, Missouri trapped again, which resulted in a wide open corner three for Ashworth. And just in general, if you're in half court offense, forget any type of trapping defense, but if you're playing against a half-court offense, the last thing you want to do is help off of the strong side corner, right? You want to help off the weak side corner, if anything. It's a much more difficult pass. You got to do the Sean East, you know, do a hook shot pass 25 feet versus just throwing it to the guy who's seven feet away right into his chest for a wide open three. So, again, if I got to nitpick something, I think that'd be – about the only thing I would nitpick from Dennis Gates and company in this game. Just maybe a little bit too much double teaming late in the game, especially when Missouri has the lead. That's just something I would maybe back up off of a little bit. But I will say another interesting thing here, Missouri played eight guys tonight. Isaiah Mosley didn't make the trip. Trey Gomillion warmed up, tried to make a go of it. Tried to make a go million of it, if you will, but he couldn't He couldn't make it happen. That's too bad. I know Trey was emotional about that. Hopefully he can make it back on Saturday. Listen, I just really like Trey go million as a basketball player, so I hope he can get out there for us again because not only on a human level but on a basketball level, he really, really helps us a lot. So that basically meant the Missouri essentially played six guys plus Mohamed Diara for three minutes Aiden Shaw for another 10 or 12 or so. And that basically added up to Dorius, the seven foot one kid. He played 12 minutes for Utah State. Again, I thought Dennis Gates did an excellent job of just playing their size off of the court strategically. Decided immediately, he's like, guess what? I'm going to put Kobe and Carter out there. And you're going to have to make a decision. And he made Utah State make a decision. I think they made the right decision to be honest, to size down and go against Missouri. But at the same time, again, Utah State doesn't have the most depth in the world. Neither is Missouri right now, but just taking Dorius out of that game, I just felt like that really hurt Utah State and a really brilliant strategic decision by Dennis Gates and his staff. But you know what? Hey, thanks for joining me as always here on Locked on Mizzou. Going to take Friday off 
Because guess what? The Tigers are playing on Saturdays. How about a post-game show? Missouri will be playing against likely Arizona or maybe Princeton as well. You never know. So no matter what happens, I'll be here for you post-game after Missouri's second round game right here on Locked on Mizzou.